this comes to your point with the guys that they're in church and praising and worshiping and going home and beating their wives they don't have a relationship with God either mm -hmm. and God's very clear about that Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm here with Abraham. I'm here with Ivan. It's great to be with you guys here. Yeah. Uh, today we do have a sensitive topic and the topic is about violence mm -hmm. and people have a lot of questions and people have different stance on where, where they feel like they belong and where they stand in. Um, some people would agree with self-defense, some people won't, um, some people think this is the Christian way to do things, um, some people believe in capital punishment, some people don't. Mm -hmm. So we really want to discuss a lot of these things. Uh, but I think before we get into the topic, I think we need to define the word. Yeah. What do you guys think is violence in, in a spiritual sense, in a biblical sense? sense? So... Uh, violence, as we see it now, you know, when you when you violate someone's personal safety for, and I guess we can say an unjustified reason, uh, what that actually means could mean various different things. We see people with capital punishment. Is that violence? Mm -hmm. um, obviously. Or is it retribution? Yeah. yeah. So violence and retribution, the, the two different ways mm -hmm. of doing it. But... As I think the way we have it now in humanity and society is it's unacceptable yeah. at, at all. You know, you, you should not lay your hands on someone else. Right. And uh, we can talk about why that is. Uh, what about you? So remember when <clears throat> we see them, you said, sorry, guys, my voice is kind of fading. So I'll try do my best. But when we look at um, the New Testament, it says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. So it's it's that taking of force, all right, premeditated. Okay. Right? Um, now that had a certain context when it was being said, but that definition biblically, it's taking by force in a premeditated state. Cool, cool. All right. So taking the life of a person or attempting to do so, that is violence. That is violence. Cool. And a lot of people have this issue with the Bible. Right, mm. because every time people come and you know you share the gospel with them, you talk about the love of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus calls you to love your enemies, yeah. um, pray for them, and so on. And they're like, "Wait, but there is violence in the Bible." Of course. So yeah, there is. you guys come to me. You, you're you're preaching peace. You're preaching all that. Yet in your own book. There is violence. So, yeah. so how can we approach that as Christians? Yeah, that's a it's a very good apologetics question too. Okay. Because this is something that if you've ever been in apologetics or even evangelizing. So if you're evangelizing to Muslims or Buddhists, Buddhists claim to be very pacifist. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, our culture today that has a very weird substandard value system as well. Um, when they look at the Christian ethic, they're like, oh, yeah, all right. Good and true with what Jesus said, love your enemy. But the Old Testament, let's have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Like the conquest scene in the book of Joshua and what God was calling Moses to do as they're entering the promised land. And you're like, well, God was actually predetermining the execution and the extinguishing of a whole culture. And he did. Yeah. He did. Because the Bible does speak yeah. about men, women, and children, yeah. right? And um, and people might not have an issue with the men because mm -hmm. they're like, all right, the men are going to war. Yeah. But God is calling the Israelites to go yeah. and kill the women, kill the children. You know, yeah. children are always known to be, you know, innocent, mm -hmm. right? We, when we think of a child, we think of an innocent child. Yeah. And that child had nothing to do with the war, right? And probably did not even practice any of the culture of the Canaanite, right? If he's a two-year-old, has no idea what sin is, what, you know, holiness is, what breaking the law is, and so on. Although at the same time, when God speaks to Jonah, he says, it's the people of Nineveh, they don't know their left hand from their right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of these children and the innocence that you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in, in that, this is an important thing for Christians, young Christians who... 
you know, they've gone through the New Testament, they understand Christian doctrine, and then they go into the Old Testament and they get really confused by what's going on. <clears throat> there is a context here. Mm -hmm. That context is related to the people of Israel, not the church. Okay, so this is the people of Israel in the Old Testament that they were called by God to be his instrument of judgment on the sins of those nations. Because God said in the time of Abraham, when he's promising Abraham that his people are going to become this mighty people, they're going to be a nation, but they're going to spend time in Egypt because the sin of the Amorites and the Amalekites and the sin of these people, the Canaanites, it has not reached its fullest. Yeah. So God was actually relenting on judgment against them in the hopes that you know they'd repent or they'd come to him or they'd stop their sinfulness. He was very patient. And so he pulled back on his judgment. Their, their sin had not reached its fullest heights. And then it was at that time, it was at that perfect timing that, all right, their sin has reached the roof. It's gone. I mean, look, they talk, people talk about, oh, how could they kill the children? These were people who were sacrificing their own children to their own gods, right? So they didn't care either. But when it came to God, in extinguishing the culture, it was because their culture was infecting the surrounding cultures. It was infecting the world. And it was propagating that same kind of pagan ritual and pagan system all throughout the world. And God needs to remove that. And God does that as, as a source of judgment. So <clears throat> Israel becomes this weapon. It becomes this instrument of God to bring his judgment on people. Now, he could have done it through any other way, but he did it through Israel so they would know that it is Yahweh, it is the Lord, who is bringing judgment. Yeah, I think that's what people miss a lot, is yeah. <clears throat> how bad or how evil uh, the people were that mm. God's punishment was, was on them. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, oh, why did God do that? Yet when people look at you know, something that happens, for example, like a child molester or something, they'll say, yeah, that guy should burn in hell. Yeah, yeah, of course. And essentially, they were like that, but worse. Mm. So people, yeah. I think that's what a lot of people miss. They miss how bad, the, the, say the land couldn't accept them. Yeah, yeah. That's how bad they yeah. were. And I think that's a good point that we're starting with, because every time we see um, an act like this, we always look at the person that created the havoc to be in the wrong, of right? Course, yeah. But then when we look at, for example, Canaan and God, we see a judgment. Yeah. We don't see someone who's not in control of his emotions yeah. and just wants to hurt people, yeah. right? They just look at, oh, look, oh, those poor Canaanites, those poor people Yeah. that but, God had no mercy on. And, but, and, yeah. and God, when he chose Israel to do so, he chose Babylon to do the same thing to Israel. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. the only reason why Israel survived, because he left a remnant, was because of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. The Messiah's promise to come through them. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't just be all wiped out. Yeah. So God had his promise to Abraham, as we spoke about. And through his seed, it's one seed, through his seed, many nations will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was that time until the Messiah came you know, that God kept Israel going. And yeah. he still keeps them going till today because he still has a future plan for them. So it's very important when we get approached by these questions. And look, sometimes you're never going to satisfy the other side. It's, oh, no, of you course, know, once someone says God did this to someone else, oh, that's it, I'm out of here, I don't want to listen to yeah. it. Sometimes people just want an excuse they're not looking to understand. We were what's speaking going about on. that a bit earlier. That people will use these situations, <clears throat> and they they have like a moral standard for God. Mm -hmm. Oh, he broke my moral standard, so I just can't accept Christianity because of this. And it's kind of like a justification for them not to adhere to the Christian principles or the gospel. And you're like, well, there's a way to understand what happened there. And there's a very easy way to be like, okay, well, God's within his right here. You, however, don't want to accept the gospel because of your own sin. Mm. It has really nothing to do with this. And I like, um, uh, I was watching a video that was a long time ago, years ago. And uh, the question was asked to one of the pastors. And the pastor said, well, in the Bible says that God gives life 
and he takes away life. Exactly. So in reality, every single person that die is because God took exactly. his life. Yeah, exactly. Now, there is many ways where God takes the life of a person. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, death and life are in God's control, in, yeah. in God's hand. So if you feel like God taking the life of the Canaanites was a big deal, then you got to look from Adam until he, the coming of Jesus. Every, person, Every yeah. single person's life is taken by God. Mm -hmm. If today is my last day, for example, God is going to take my life. That's right. You know, it, it might, on the surface, it's going to have its natural effect, right? I could be hit by a car. I could have a heart attack. Those things that you're going to diagnose naturally. Yeah. But spiritually speaking, that was a day for me where God said, this is the end of the line for you. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why it's a lot of people who are not within, you know, the belief of God and their mindset is within this world and there's nothing beyond this world. Mm. But like you're saying, and, and actually I was going to make the same point. Um, everything that happened a thousand years ago, it was all temporary. Anything that happened a hundred years ago, it's all, it was temporary for the life, the span of the person's life on earth. And after that, there's, there's, yeah. there's greater things. There's etern eternity. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that was the thing. So when we talk about this specific con to context with the book of Joshua, um, going into the book of Judges and up to the time of David, that was a very specific judgment call of God. And once David was on the throne and Solomon kind of established the throne fully, you see the violence completely diminished. They actually had treaties with their neighbors and they lived in that coexistent peace, yeah. right? So you can already see, all right, that judgment is over. God has placed the judgment. His wrath is kind of eased. And now be the light yeah. and the soul. And just on that as well. Um, uh, God didn't allow David to build the temple because yeah, he had because blood on his hands. So, so, so God. So this happened, but it seems we should, probably should touch on you know, how does God actually feel about it? And and we know that God doesn't want anyone to perish. God doesn't want any of these things to happen. But mm, yeah. in some cases, people have a free will, and there's consequence as well. Yeah. So uh, I think like what I was sharing really connects what with where you're going now is that. God is taking every single life, but he doesn't give the right to any human being to take a life, mm -hmm. right? Like it starts with Cain and Abel, mm -hmm. right? Cain literally killed his very own brother. Mm -hmm. For the and, reasons of jealousy. Yes. Yeah. And God didn't say, well, that should be okay because that's what the world is going to be. No, he's like, why, why, why did you take your brother's life? His blood is crying out to me, mm. right? So we, we can see that the life of Abel was so precious to God that God spoke to Cain. Because mm. we know that sin has hidden the face of God. That's what Isaiah says, right? That's why God stopped walking in the garden with Adam and Eve. They got kicked out. God was no longer walking with them. Right? They didn't have that intimate relationship before sin. But then after sin, we see that God speaks in periods and moments, right? Through and the prophets. Yeah. And, through, yeah. and there came a time where that was such an ugly time in Cain's life that he came and actually spoke to him. What did you just do to your brother? Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians... We can, we can, we, we need to be very careful here because even though we've been saved, right, we're still living in the flesh mm -hmm. and this flesh still desires sin and sin desires to kill. Mm -hmm. Like if you read James and I'm not just speaking about, you know, killing a person, I'm speaking about just spiritual death as well. You look at James, James chapter one. Right? It's a desire, breeds sin, sin, sin breeds sin. death. Yeah. So the idea that if we desire sin, which is a spiritual death, then the desire for violence mm -hmm. can also be there as well. Yeah. And we need to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. absolutely that, agree. That's why Paul, he's encouraging the church. These guys were already saved. Mm -hmm. He's saying, do your best 
to live a life of peace among others. Yeah. yeah. And he's speaking to Christians here. So I think maybe we can touch on the Christian violent man. Yeah. Because there are a lot of men in the church that yeah. can be violent they're, they're for, in their marriage. Yeah. And they're, so for, they're for prey to a bit of the red pill kind of ideology too, about like how they need to take things by force and mm -hmm. be masculine in that. So that's, that's an ungodly approach to God's design of masculinity. But um, the, the interesting thing with Cain is when God is talking to Cain, he said, sin is crouching at your door and its desire is for you, is, is to be over you, to be your master. But you must master it. This was before he killed yeah. Cain. And so relate that to the book of James. We have these two natures within us as a reborn individual. We are reborn in spirit, and yet we retain in the momentary, in the temporary, this flesh nature as well. Mm -hmm. And sin has this desire over us. But we have the power and the ability by the grace of God to overcome by faith. Yeah. And by living a life that is subject to God and to his will. And so one of the things that happens is we compartmentalize and we're like, well, okay, yeah, well, lust is bad. Um, and yeah, physical murder is bad. But then we're like, oh, we're not going to be doormats either. And we don't want the world to, you know, push, push yeah. us and push us down. We have to defend ourselves. And you're like, okay, well, let's hold up. Let's look at the Christian ethic. Let's look at what Christ has said and where we draw those lines, mm -hmm. right? Because it can be very dangerous at times. Yeah. So you touched on a lot of good points. And uh, at the, like we talked about this before, where God created something perfect. Mm. Somewhere in between, things got messed up. But then Christ came back and restored a lot of that. And I think we're saying we're seeing the same thing with violence. Mm -hmm. And secondly, our natural body is is it desires violence. It's it's the natural state. And actually I think would be seen as pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Violence I think would have been seen as normal if it wasn't for the influence of Christ and the Christian you know, Christians and, and what Jesus came to restore, to restore back to before things were broken. Yeah. You see after the fall, straight away with the line of Cain, it's just murder after, like, yeah. you see with his, with Lamech, his, his grandson in his lineage, he, he's starting to kill and it becomes like a normal factor in his line. Yeah. And in the line of man, it's like, this is becoming a normality because the nature is like, there's envy, there's strife, there's power dynamics and the flesh is just, it is mastering that desire to do the will of God. Yeah. We're born in the sin nature. And so this is where, yeah, where, where Christ has come to restore and redeem as well. So it is safe to say that when man <clears throat> fell, sin, uh, death entered the world, of course. right? And we can see a lot of violence in the Old Testament, in the New Testament today, and we'll see it tomorrow, mm. right? Um, and the Bible would record, will record these violent event, violent events, because that's what happened in history, right? Yeah. And that's why we take the Bible to be reliable. Mm -hmm. It's not a children's book where it's uh, rainbows and, and, and hides hi things. Yeah. yeah. So it the Bible doesn't hide the ugly side of humanity. Yeah. It actually exposes it, and shows how God feels about it and how God judges it. I like if you if you if you've read Romans, the book of Romans, Paul starts to speak about this deep layer of the law mm. that we we weren't given the law to try and fulfill it. We do our best to, right? That's what they, the the Old Testament guys did, but the law was a reflection of who we were. In a two. And and the power of judgment came from the law, mm. right? When God judged a nation, it was because he revealed his laws. You did this, therefore I will do this to you. Yeah. And based on the light that they had, he would judge them more severely or less. Yeah, which is why he was the strictest on his own people, exactly, yeah. right? And he's more strict on us as Christians than the people in the world. Because the judgment of God starts in the house of in, God. Yeah, in the house of God. So it, it's where we are. So something we can get a bit more personal now, right? Mm -hmm. We spoke about, you know, nations, Israel, 
Canaan and so on. Mm. We spoke about Adam and Eve. But let's come back to us. 21st century, we see, um, for example, a man would smile, shake your hand, um, give you a hug at church, goes home and beats his wife. Mm. He's a v- very violent man. Then we need Mark Ma- Ma- uh, school here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a man, for example, and, and I'm not saying women are not capable of violence, but men are more prone yeah. to, to, to be violent. They're physically uh, yeah. more stronger. Yeah. A man would do the same thing at church, would love you, God bless your brother, would get to work and have a fist fight with one of the co-workers, yeah. right? Or in a traffic light, yeah. he's there Especially swearing his head off, yeah. getting out of the car, yeah. Abusing the other person because they especially, cut him off. Especially the driving in Fairfield, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> driving in Sydney. So I think if we can just yeah. spend some yeah, yeah. time on it, yeah, that, so that'd be something great. The, the main thing is, as as a human, like I said before, we are inclined to violence. There are certain triggers that that trigger people into mm-hmm. violence. One of them is being attacked. So being attacked will trigger you to violence. Uh, but it just reminded me, what did Jesus say? When you are slapped, mm, he said to turn the, other, turn the other cheek. There are other attacks. People people are emotionally attacked. Uh, people feel f- the feeling of inferiority. I think when we see a lot of the violence that's just occurring, you know, on the news that you're mm. seeing, I think the the, the inferiority, um, in exclusion, being excluded, all of these are attacks, and humans are susceptible jealousy. Uh, to to then outbursts of violence, mm. but again, it's because of the broken nature. But but it, it exists. Yeah, it's an it's an interesting thing because majority of the serial killers, especially like when we look in the United States, you know, people that just massacre. You will hear descriptions of their parents. Oh, he was such a quiet, and lovely kid. You know, he mm. like he wouldn't hurt a fly. That was their description. Right. But then that one trigger, and they've been keeping within themselves this violent rage. Well, on that, that could be part of ex- exclusion. Mm. being Exclusion, excluded. yeah. There's a violent rage and it's building up, building up, building up. They don't have a proper outlet. Yeah. They don't have a relationship with God, of course. Um, and this comes to your point with the guys that they're in church and praising and worshipping and going home and beating their wives. They don't have a relationship with God either. Mm-hmm. And God's very clear about that because it says if you mistreat your wife in in Peter speaks about this. God will not hear your prayer. You are separated from him by how you were treating your wife. So they're just deceiving themselves and they're hypocrites in this. Um, but yeah, with these people who who go out on these violent rampages, this guy that um, stabbed those people in, in Bondi, you know, there's mental illness there or whatnot, but there's a separation from God. You can't be in fellowship with God and then lay violence in that way. You know? yeah. yeah, so I believe actually that just like Abraham saying, is there's a spiritual element to it, mm. and Satan knows what triggers a human, mm-hmm. and he will do those triggers on, on a human. At the same time, it's he can only do that when we open the doors to it, when we open the doors to disobeying God, uh, not following God, when mm. we open the door to sin. That's when Satan can come in, play around, push these buttons, and and make people do these things. Yeah. yeah. So, so what would your advice be to a person, for example? There, there might be someone say, look, this is a problem in my life, anger, right? Anger uh, yeah, anger. my anger, um, <clears throat> you know, that, that wrath that is in me, just I lose my mind, I can't think anymore, and I just act. Yeah. And then once the act is finished, then I come back to my sense, and I'm like, oh, man, what did I just do, yeah, right? Yeah. So there is a regret. So how could we say let's yeah. kind of fix our emotions, submit our emotions to God and and make sure that we're acting in a Christ-like manner? Yeah. So what advice would, would you guys have for a person that's actually struggling with violent behavior? Well, I see this as the same as how you struggle with any other sinful behavior. Mm. So... Uh, let's say, you know, one of the biggest temptations these days is, you know, I don't want to say it, but, you know, the websites. That you we can have. say it. I mean, they, they, <laughs> yeah. know, they know what's going on. I don't, I don't want you, you know. to, to think well. <laughs> but 
uh, that sort of lustful temptation, which yeah. is available on the websites, is is now so easily accessible. Yeah, yeah. And and then there's this building up of, I guess, self control. It's it's kind of it's everywhere. It's been thrown in our face, right? And and we need to build up this self control. And I I think it's the same thing with these violent rages that we have. It's it's just a matter of self control and learning how to master what your flesh wants. And again, spiritually, I think if you open the door to disobedience, if you look at uh, King David when he committed adultery and then murder, mm -hmm. why? It's because when everyone was at war, ironically, <laughs> talking about violence, but when everyone was at war, he was at home. Yeah. What was he doing at home? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same type thing Is with us. When, 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 when everyone's at Bible study on Friday and you decide you're too lazy to go, I think the, this sort of disobedience and you know opening the door to sin yeah. uh, allows Satan power to tempt you. But of course, you're always it's always you. you you're the yeah. one in control. Smaller, but smaller compromises will lead you to the bigger compromise. Yeah. that that's one of the bigger ones there. Um, and in that regard, I would, because we've had people that they've come from violent past. They've been in gangs. They've been, whether it's biker gangs, or they just grew up in a very rough crowd. And they come to Christ and they still have that remnant of violence that can just creep up here and there. And they, certain things will trigger them. And they need discipleship. Mm -hmm. They need to know the word of God. Romans 12. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we're being conformed to the image of Christ by our renewing. So we hear the word of God, we read the word, we're being discipled by him, and he's slowly molding us. It's not usually an overnight process. Sanctification is lifelong. Mm -hmm. And you may struggle with those things, but you see, if you are consistent in that discipline, mm -hmm. you will see Christ, like just with what you were speaking about with lust, mm -hmm. if you are if you are devoted and if you are consistent in your spiritual discipline you will see that fade off your life yeah you know and you will see the more you say no the easier it is to say no mm. and the same thing with violence the more you say no to those thoughts those inner rages think of those intrusive thoughts that happen when you're speaking to people when you're driving whatever and the thought comes in whether from inside or out to you know i just want to get out of the car and just beat that guy silly mm. and you're like that's not from God. And you have to be in control of what your mind is saying. And as Christ did, use the word of God to preach to yourself. And if you do that consistently enough, and if you're in prayer consistently enough, and if you're fasting, if you're praying, you know this is a struggle in your area, God's going to have his way. Mm -hmm. And the spirit will lead and he will, he will mold you and he will grow you. And you will get to a point where you're like, I haven't had violent rage within me for like years now. And it's wild. Because you've been consistently allowing God to mold you and break you down. Yeah. yeah. And it's how badly you want it. Yeah. It's how much you want it of course, as well. Yeah. It's like going to the gym every day. I keep yeah. bringing this up. Sorry, bro. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, we'll do a topic about that. Uh, do you guys have any last thoughts? Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, coming to Christ, we, we, we need to, we're broken and we need to submit it to Christ. Mm. Violence is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for Christians. And we just need to, to run at it as hard as we can so that we can live in the image of Christ. Cool. Yeah. Final thought, and like just a quick side note as well, when we're talking about self-defense, there is a bit of a categorical difference between self-defense and violence. You know, if someone's going to threaten your family and you're, you're the priest of the house, you're their protector, you do need to defend, mm -hmm. right? To defend as possible in a way that, you can protect your family without being overly violent, mm -hmm. but you do need to protect your family, protect yourself. That's fine. But violence itself is not within the Christian ethic. To go out of your way and premeditate to hurt someone or to forcibly take revenge, no. Yeah, right. cool. Um, one thing I would say which kind of connects to what you were talking about, like getting out of the car and, and trying to hurt someone. Uh, if you notice whenever Jesus encountered violent people, he never had the thoughts that you had. Mm -hmm. Just that's something for you to think about. I'm going to do this to this person or this person is doing that to me. Therefore, I'm going to hurt them. Jesus never had that. 
the Bible says that he went as a quiet lamb to mm -hmm. the slaughter, right? If Jesus could live his whole life being pleasing to God at the same time, did not have our own thoughts, then that's also possible for us, mm -hmm. is to have the mind of Christ as 1 Corinthians says, we do have the mind of Christ. So let's apply the mind of Christ when it comes to our rage and our violent thoughts. God bless you all. Enjoy your time. See ya.